five years ago, my wife and I took a trip to Colorado. I don't know how she always does it, but she found this awesome place for us to camp out at. Whenever I try to find any destination for us, I fail miserably. It's one of the many reasons why I love her. She always has a plan and she keeps me on track, which is great since I'm the most indecisive person I know. Basically, we had free reign to camp wherever we wanted in this area. I drove our truck to the perfect spot and then we started setting up our tent, grill, music, and everything else we would need to make this an awesome trip. We were planning on staying five nights and unfortunately we only made it three. I'm sure you would leave too if you experienced what we had experienced on that third night. The first few days were great. Unlike a lot of camping destinations in the United States, this part of the country was different. Maybe it's just me because I grew up on the East Coast, but when I think camping, I think trees, lakes, and slasher movies from the 80s. But instead, this area was filled with mountains, sand, and an entirely different type of vegetation that I was used to on the other side of the country. I fell in love instantly with the area that we were in, and I made sure that I was living each day to the fullest. Probably the best part of this specific trip, though, was the fact that there was nobody there. In three days, we hadn't seen one person, and where that may seem creepy to some people, for us, this was perfect. Then the dreaded third night came. The day was awesome, just like the previous days. We hiked some mountain trails, and we were a bit more exhausted than we had been. We took it easy that night and got into our tent early. I think the last time I looked at the time, it was around 9pm. Not long after looking at the time, I fell asleep, and my wife did as well. I woke up several hours later to my wife shaking me. I was concerned and asked her what was going on. She was holding a finger up to her lips, gesturing to be quiet and pointing outside the tent. I was quiet, but I didn't know what I was listening to. She eventually sort of mouthed the words to me, I think there might be an animal out there. I laughed because I remember thinking that it was cute that she was afraid of an animal. In hindsight, that was very stupid of me because... There are a number of animals in that area that could have easily ripped us to shreds if they wanted to. I began listening some more since I didn't hear anything right away. And then, I heard the growl. It was the weirdest growl I had ever heard in my life. Not that I'm some animal expert, but this growl was strange. It didn't feel deep and guttural like the sound of a bear growling. It was more like this weak attempt at a growl. I was thinking that maybe some dying animal was out there. And then I started to remember some article that I had read about a coyote with rabies or something and it went crazy and attacked a bunch of people. The footsteps of the animal outside of the tent sounded light, so whatever this creature was, it was small, like a coyote. I didn't want to take any chances with this beast. When I heard the creature make some distance away from the tent, I slowly unzipped it and told my wife to just get in the truck. Once the zipper was fully unzipped, we didn't see anything so we both quickly jogged over to the truck and I unlocked the doors and we dove in. Once we were inside, we were looking out of the tinted windows and trying to get a glimpse of whatever creature was making that noise. A few minutes passed and we still didn't see anything, no movement whatsoever. I know something was out there. Not only did I hear the footsteps, but we could clearly hear the strange growl. My wife started to fall asleep again and this time I jolted her awake. I screamed because what I saw was not a creature. It was in fact a human being. It was a very wild looking guy with long hair and seemingly a beard. He was walking sort of hunched over and just making these growling noises that we'd heard before. I was angry and I was just about ready to get out of my truck and confront this guy and then, the nightmare got worse. Just beyond where we had our tent set up, three more men walked into our camp area. It looked like they were seemingly whispering and laughing to one another. Three of the four guys were carrying these huge sticks, at least I think they were sticks. One of the guys, without notice, then pulled the stick all the way back behind his head and forcibly swung the stick down on top of our now empty tent. I heard the one guy yell, something, which made me think that this guy must have thought that we were still in the tent. 
fight or flight mode kicked in immediately. I started the truck and drove off as fast as I could, leaving the tent and all those creeps in the dust. I didn't even look back to see his facial expression or anything. I just drove as fast as I could and as far away as I could. While we were driving, my wife waited until we finally got service, and then she called the police and told them what had happened. I think she was put in touch with a park ranger or someone like that because some type of law enforcement called her phone a few times. We never went back for the tent or any of our stuff, which was fine with us. The park ended up charging me some sort of fee for leaving all of my stuff there and technically canceling my reservation early by leaving after three days. The law enforcement was sympathetic, but the people who operated the camping at the park didn't care at all what we had been through and still charged us fees claiming that it was policy. At the end of the day, it was a small price to pay for the luxury of continuing my life unharmed. And I sincerely hope that whoever those monsters were, I hope that they're caught and are incapable of causing anyone else harm. A lot of people hate the city, but I would rather take the city over the wilderness any day of the week, especially after what happened to me and my friends a year ago. My one friend had just separated from her fiancé, who she had been with for about seven years, and she wasn't doing super great with the breakup, which of course I don't blame her. Our other friend, who is the outdoorsy type, suggested that we go away for a night and just camp out in the woods. Surprisingly, our friend was into the idea. So the three of us found this cute little cottage in the middle of the woods to camp out in for a night. I was excited to have a night out with my girls that wasn't in the city and wasn't all about getting dolled up and all that jazz. Of course, once we got there though, my one recently separated friend got bored, which I knew was going to happen. She started looking up local bars in the area and eventually found this dive bar in a nearby town. Now this was my idea of camping, at least that's what I joked with my friends about. It was still a nice change of pace though. We went to this local bar and it was nice not to have to worry about the city scene while we were at this place. It was a handful of locals at the bar and that's pretty much it, at least as far as I could tell anyway. My friend started up a conversation with one of the guys at the bar. It was a middle-aged man, but he was handsome in a rugged kind of way. I don't know if it was the alcohol or just the feeling of being depressed, but whatever it was, she was flirting very heavily with this man. And this went on for a while, but eventually she separated from him and told us that she was ready to head back to the cottage. On the way back to the cottage, we were giving her a hard time about her bar friend, and she just laughed it off, claiming that it wasn't that big of a deal. We get back to the cottage, and all we had was a glass of wine before we decided to go off to bed for the evening. It was clear at this point that camping was not for us. We hated being in this little cottage with no Wi-Fi and really nothing to do. I know our one friend meant well by setting this whole thing up, but it wasn't a good time. We all decided to sleep in the living room together. One of us on the couch, one of us on the love seat, and one of us in the recliner. And it didn't take long for all of us to fall asleep. A little after three in the morning, I was being nudged by one of my friends who looked very concerned. She told me that she had heard the doorknob kind of jiggling. I laughed at her and told her that she was being crazy, and that's when I heard it. It really was shaking, and not just a little bit. Whoever was out there was really trying to get into the cottage. We were too scared to get up, so we just cuddled up together on the couch and held the blanket up to our faces. Since the cottage was so small, you could walk from the front door around the entire building in no time at all. And to our horror, that's what this person did. We listened to each step outside the cottage. They were clearly sneaking, but we could hear each little twig snap after each step. The person made their way around to the back of the cottage, which was behind the couch that we were laying on. There was a large window at the back. The person went to the window, and we started to hear the shuffling sound on the other side of the curtain. And then it occurred to us, the person was trying to open it. I don't know what got into me, but... I decided to yell. I'm calling the police. The noise stopped for a moment and 
than a whisper could be heard from the other side of the window. It seemed to be a man's voice and he was whispering the name of my friend, the same friend who was flirting with that one man at the bar. My mind thought about the guy right away and I refused to believe that he followed us here but there was no other way that he'd know we were at this house. I whipped open the curtain and like a deer in the headlights, the man just stood there. It was in fact the man from the bar. He put his hands up in this sort of defensive position like he was the one who was in trouble and then he just ran. He didn't get into a car, at least none that I saw. We did phone the police right away and report what could have been a potential home invasion and I'm not sure anything ever came of it since we left first thing in the morning, which wasn't that long after the cops left. It wasn't until the drive home that we really got ourselves worked up and scared. And that's when we started to piece together everything. We got back to the cottage before midnight and this guy didn't try breaking in until after three. That means that he had to follow us to know where the cottage was, wait for us to sleep, and then try to get in. The thought of this man lurking outside for all those hours makes me want to throw up. I'm so thankful that my friend woke up to the doorknob noise because if she didn't, I don't know what would have happened. We found out after the fact that the window was unlocked and it would have only been a matter of time before he would have broke in. In a sick way, this trip really did help my friend because she was so thankful to escape unharmed that she was able to pull her life into perspective and start the long road of healing after a horrible breakup. This freaky story happened to me a few years ago. Back when my wife was still my girlfriend, we decided to take an impromptu camping trip. I never camped much, other than a few times with a friend of mine. But my girlfriend used to camp all the time with her family when she was younger, and she really wanted to camp again. She thought it would be a great chance for her and me to spend some time together, away from all the noise of the city that she and I had lived in at the time. She went all out and bought all this awesome camping stuff. Among those items was a nice new tent. It was a bigger tent, especially for two people, but I didn't mind. More room was always okay with me since I was a bigger guy at the time of the story. The one thing I liked about this tent, which I found out later most tents have, was that it had this little window thing on it so you could see outside the tent at night. I knew that it was going to be dark, but just the ability to be able to see and then have the light shine in on us in the morning was a comforting thought for me. We arrived at this desolate location in the afternoon. We were only staying two nights, so we wanted to make the best of the trip. That first afternoon, we didn't do much. We just kind of chilled, set up the tent, and went to bed early. I loved my little window in the tent. I was able to stare out of it while I was laying in my sleeping bag, and because of where the tent was located, I was able to see the night sky, and it was beautiful. Just as I expected, the light blasted through the window in the morning, and it was almost like waking up in my own bed. We got out of bed early and made the most of the day. We went fishing and hiking and was still able to spend a considerable amount of time just laying around relaxing, reading, and just enjoying the sun. We were on track to having another early night and I was alright with that. Neither one of us has ever been a night owl and we were beat from everything we did earlier in the day. We got all cozy in the tent and I made sure I propped my window screen open. While I was starting to drift off, I thought I noticed something outside the tent. It kind of looked like movement, but I didn't know if I had dozed off for a second or if I really saw something. I sat up and before I could get a good look, my girlfriend goes, Did you see that too? I told her I thought I saw something, but I wasn't sure. We both sat up and stared out of our little tent window. It just looked like a peaceful night. And then my girlfriend gasped. It sounded like air had been sucked out of her. To this day, I still have never seen the expression that she had in that moment. Sitting on a tree branch about 30 or 40 feet away was a person. They were wearing one of those weird fake president masks. And while sitting in the tree, they were sort of just kicking their feet back and forth like a child on a swing would do. We both just sat there like sitting ducks. 
I was terrified because we hadn't seen one other person the entire time that we were at this campsite, and now all of a sudden, this creep with a mask on was so close to us. I felt like crying, but I was trying to be brave since my girlfriend was already in tears. I know the person wasn't directly doing anything to us, but the unsettling nature of the situation made us both so uncomfortable. We watched the guy for probably about five minutes just sitting there in that tree, and then... He jumped down. The person still never approached the tent, but that feeling that they were going to rush us at any second never went away. It felt like forever that the person was just pacing around and then finally just stopped. He didn't move forward. He didn't sway. He just stood still like a statue. A couple of minutes later, the person turned around and now they were facing the tent head on. We could hear them laughing under the mask, and the person started to wave right at us. Even with the mask on, it felt like the person was staring directly at me, and the wave wasn't just a subtle little wave. The person was erratically moving their hand back and forth like they were trying to get their hand to fall off of something. And then the person just stopped waving abruptly, and in a muffled voice that we could barely hear from under that mask, we heard the guy yell, Bye guys! and then he literally ran full speed off into the woods. We just sat there and continued staring out of the window all night long. We both may have dozed off at different points, but we mostly stayed awake for the entire night. The guy in the mask never came back, and there was no evidence of where he came from. That was the most disturbing part. Whoever this was, he knew that we were there. We had no idea how long he had been in that tree, it could have been minutes. It could have been hours. I guess all things considered, we're lucky since nothing technically happened to us. Even though we were physically unharmed, mentally this left us messed up for a while and we're still thinking about it to this day. We've gone camping several times since that night, but from now on, we'll only stay in a cabin with doors that can lock. I can't believe the story is over 10 years old now. Time really does fly if you're not careful. So this story is probably one of the weirdest things that's ever happened to me and at the time it was incredibly scary as well. I had recently started dating my girlfriend and due to our schedules I rarely saw her and as a young man in my 20s during the events of this story I really wanted to see her. More than anything I wanted alone time with her and unfortunately it just seemed like there was never a chance for us to be alone. I still lived at home with my parents, and so did she, so alone time wasn't really something we had much of. We had only been dating for a little while, and I was already annoyed. It seemed like she had something going on every night or weekend, and I just honestly felt like an afterthought to her. One weekend I told her how I was feeling, and she responded by telling me that she had planned on a camping trip with her friends, and that she was really sorry that we couldn't hang out again. I was furious and at this point I was close to ending things with her before they had progressed any further. That day, she left for the trip and she texted me and said, Sorry, I know this is last minute, but my friend said that you could come if you want to meet us there. I absolutely hate camping, but I wasn't going to miss this chance to hang out with my girlfriend. The campsite was only about 40 minutes from my house, so I packed my bag and headed out there. This was a weird place, it wasn't like camping in the middle of the woods camping. It was in a sort of wooded area, but the campsite itself was the big giant clearing that had dozens of other people camping out. It didn't seem private and certainly didn't feel like camping to me, at least what I thought of when I thought of camping. Once I got there, this is where I first met all of her friends. They all seemed like great people and I was kind of excited to hang out with all of them that night. They were the opposite of my girlfriend though. She was quiet and reserved and all of her friends were very outgoing and loud and they all had an awesome sense of humor. While we were all hanging out, that is when I noticed a bunch of trails in the woods. Once I started walking some of the trails, I started to realize just how big this place was and it finally started to feel like what I thought of when I thought of camping. Earlier that night, we grilled some food on a portable grill and played some card games. 
Once the sun set, we drank some beers in special containers since we weren't allowed to have alcohol. Around 11 p.m., two people came over to our little section of tents. I don't know if we should call them park rangers or what, but they were basically in charge of the campsite and the surrounding trails. They started to shine flashlights in our area very aggressively and wanted to know why we were still awake. We all laughed and looked at each other very confused. One of the guys who was there in this sort of arrogant voice said, Why wouldn't we be awake? It's our vacation, we're planning on staying awake for a while, hanging out. One of the rangers, in a very aggressive voice, immediately jumped down his throat and said, There's a strict 10 o'clock curfew. All lights out. We just laughed, still thinking this was some sort of weird joke. Her one friend, the same one who spoke up before, said again, I paid all this money for this campsite, and you're literally making me go to sleep earlier? Why don't you get out of here? I don't know if I would have had the same response, but we all felt the same way. The woman basically yelled at us like we were children. Frustrated, we all started making our way back into our tents. One of the friends said, It's okay guys, let's just meet in my tent and we'll play some cards and keep quiet. Well, the ranger must have heard her because she turned around, got right back in her face and said, Lights out means lights out. No cards, no talking. It's time for bed. I'll be making rounds again soon as if you guys are still awake, you're gone. This was weird and ridiculous. I felt like some little kid, and I couldn't believe that those people were making grown adults go to sleep like this was prison or something. Once she walked away, everyone I was with was stewing with anger. We were behaving like she wanted mainly because we had been drinking and if she wanted to kick us out, we would have been screwed because none of us were okay to operate a vehicle. It wasn't long until everyone basically fell asleep except for me and my girlfriend who were just enjoying our time together. Then she suggested something that I couldn't believe. She said that we should sneak onto one of the trails so we could have some true alone time. As I said before, I was a young man in my early 20s, so this was all I needed to hear. We quietly slid out of the tent and we sneakily made our way over to one of the nearby trails. Once we were a good distance from the start of the trail, we started to really enjoy our alone time. But then the enjoyment ended instantly. We heard a man shout, Hey! And we both froze, trying not to bring attention to ourselves. We were sure that it was another park ranger, so we thought that it was best to just stay still. Then this deep voice spoke up again. I know you're here. I just want to say hi. And we both each looked confused. What was that supposed to mean? I started to peek around one of the trees, even though it was nearly pitch black. Standing on the path with this little flashlight was a very strange looking man. He was short and kind of wearing an oversized white t-shirt. While I was peeking, he made eye contact with me and saw me instantly. He stood straight up and smiled and he said, Hey, buddy, I got something for you. This situation was already weird and I felt very tense being in the woods with this strange dude. I didn't respond because I had no idea what to say. And then he said one of the most convoluted things I had ever heard when he says, I got all this money in my pocket. My ex-wife is going to take it, so I want to give it away before she finds out. Just, just come over here and grab it, would you? He held out his hand, but it had nothing in it. He was about 20 feet away, so thankfully we weren't right on top of each other. I looked at my girlfriend and mouthed the words, run to her. And as soon as she fled... I followed closely right behind her. Right as I went to take off, I looked at the guy who shouted something like, No! And then he briefly lunged in my direction, but I was already sprinting away before he could even commit to some move. We ran as fast as we could out of the woods, and it never appeared like we were being followed, though. Once we got back to camp, we waited about an hour for the rangers to make a walkthrough, and I grabbed the lady from before and told her that some man was walking the woods. I lied and told her that I could see him from the tent, and she did believe me. They notified the authorities, and that's the last I saw of the creepy man in those woods. The rest of the night, my eyes were just glued in the direction of the trails, waiting to catch a glimpse of that stranger, but thank God I never did. I have no idea what he wanted that night, but the look in his eyes when we darted away was something I'll never forget. 
Every year around this time when people start camping a lot, I'm reminded of that horrible encounter in the woods and I'm just thankful that we were far enough away from him that we were able to get away safely. There is a reason why I have to be talked into camping every time it comes up in conversation with either friends or family. I don't mind the outdoors and I don't mind nature. I just feel like I want to sleep in bed and not on the ground in a tent. On this specific year, my boyfriend talked me into going camping, but this time we would be staying in a cabin so I can sleep in a bed. I still voted for the ocean, but at least I was actually going to be sleeping in a bed. The trip consisted of me and my boyfriend and two other couples. The six of us found a nice cabin in the woods that was mostly secluded and was only about a hundred yard walk to this beautiful lake that we could swim in. I didn't want to admit it, but I was actually feeling this trip quite a bit, especially once we got there. The first day was amazing. We spent all day walking some trails, swimming in the lake, and in the early evening we decided to cook up some steaks on the grill, and it was a great first day. That night we all went inside and went to bed at around midnight if I had to guess. I didn't sleep very well. I thought that I could hear something outside all night but I just chalked it up to my imagination. After all we were in the woods so hearing strange noises all night long is not that weird. The next morning we were all outside getting ready for a nice hike when we heard this jolly voice shout from behind us. Why hello there. How are y'all doing today? My boyfriend, being the always social butterfly that he is, started talking to the guy right away. He told us his name was Wayne and that he was an expert in all the trails around here. And the whole interaction was just slightly strange, but I suppose not alarming. He said he lived nearby and that he was hiking some trails and he heard us talking and he just wanted to make sure that we were settling in okay. I remember thinking it was sweet of him to check in with us. He was a bigger guy, I would say well over six feet tall, and he had a pretty big gut. He had a backpack on with hiking boots and jeans, so he really didn't look like anything other than a typical hiking local. We thanked him, and he laughed in this jolly voice, and he went on his way. As we hiked, we laughed about Wayne for a little while. When the afternoon came, we all decided to go to the lake to swim for a few hours before heading back to the cabin. When we got down to the lake, we were sitting on the dock soaking up the sun and from beyond the trees, we heard that voice again. There they are. We all jumped back because honestly it scared us. Because now standing at the edge of the dock was Wayne again. We asked what he was doing and again he claimed that he was just wandering by and happened to see all of us out there. My boyfriend laughed it off and talked with him for a little while but... My friend Tina's boyfriend and I felt uneasy about this. The entire time they were talking, Wayne just nodded, laughed, and kept looking around. After they finished their conversation, he kept mumbling, okay, under his breath, and then walked away. It was weird, but not really scary, at least not yet. That night, as we were all sitting around the campfire sharing scary stories, I felt even more uncomfortable for some reason. Suddenly, Wayne jumped out of the bushes without warning and yelled in this sort of joking voice, Here I am! Followed by a loud and excited laugh. We all jumped out of our skin, even worse than at the docks. At this point, my boyfriend was upset and kind of yelled at Wayne, telling him to just leave us alone and go back home. He explained that scaring us like that wasn't cool and Wayne was lucky none of us retaliated out of instinct. Wayne looked upset and claimed that he was just trying to help us have some memorable experiences on our trip. He left on one of the trails, I guess, and he seemed to look pretty visibly upset. I almost felt sorry for him until I realized that it was after 11, and there was no good reason for him to be wandering around our camp. The experience put a damper on the rest of the night, and we ended up calling it a night not long after that. We went inside and cleaned up the place since we were supposed to be leaving early in the morning. Once in bed, I told my boyfriend that I wasn't feeling great about this whole Wayne situation. I had a bad feeling that he would somehow come out again. I couldn't stop thinking that that weird noise that I heard the night before might actually be from this goofball. That night, I was wide awake again. I'm not sure of the time, but at some point during the night, 
I could distinctly hear breathing and footsteps outside the window. I woke up my boyfriend and begged him to check for me. He was annoyed at first, but then changed his tone instantly. I saw him look out, and his skin turn white as a ghost. And he whispered to me that he could see someone outside the cabin, pacing back and forth. And he thinks it's Wayne. I went to the window and tried not to draw any attention to us. What appeared to be Wayne seemed to be arguing with himself, talking, but almost incoherently. He attempted to open the locked door, and when he couldn't, he started pounding his head as if upset with himself. And after pacing for a few more minutes, he seemed to just disappear back into the woods. We were horrified and didn't know what to do. My boyfriend called the owner of the cabin and informed him that we were also calling the police. A cop car showed up a few minutes later and we explained the entire day's events to the officer, including Wayne's appearance. The cop didn't seem too bothered and just simply nodded along. It felt like he was just sort of listening for the sake of listening and didn't grasp the potential severity of the situation. We packed up our stuff, made some coffee and just stayed awake until dawn. And once the sun was rising, we loaded up the van and headed home. Once we got to the main road, we saw Wayne walking by himself. He still seemed to be just sort of mumbling to himself, hitting his head from time to time. We called the dispatcher and told them that we had just seen Wayne, who had been trying to break into our house earlier, walking on the road, and that was the end of it on our side. I'm not sure if the cops ever eventually picked him up, or if he just fled back into the woods. I wonder if he really does live nearby or if he was just some strange man wandering around hoping to cause harm. I'm happy nothing physically happened to us, but from now on, they all can go camping without me. So I'm just now writing this story hours after the most insane moment of my entire life. I know that may seem a bit dramatic, but at the moment it was absolutely insane. My family and I just arrived at our campsite for the week and I'm on eggshells looking over my shoulder every two seconds even though deep down I'm sure I'm alright. So bear with me as I try to do my best that I can to tell this story since it's the first time I'm recalling it since it just happened. So late last night me and my family left our house to embark on our one week camping adventure. Our two kids were so excited to finally be able to join me and my wife on one of our camping adventures, and she and I had gone on all sorts of adventures over the years, but we wanted to wait until our kids were just a little bit older before involving them. Finally, that time had come for the kids to join us, and we set out on the seven-hour drive a little after midnight. After the initial excitement of leaving and the musical concert inside my truck was over, everyone fell asleep in the truck except for me, which is fine. It gave me a chance to listen to one of my audiobooks that I've been neglecting for some time. I was surprised when we were close to our destination, and I realized that my family had mostly been asleep for the entire drive. They would have brief moments of waking up and asking where we were, but they mostly stayed out cold for the entire trip. About 30 minutes until we reached the campsite, I got the dreaded flat tire that no driver wants to get, especially when on vacation. I was lucky to have my spare, so this was no more than an inconvenience, but I was still annoyed. I remember being scared as I briefly lost control of the car and slid to the side of the road before I regained control. Somehow, my family was still asleep. I quietly got out of the truck and uncovered the spare tire buried under all of our luggage. And while preparing to fix the tire, I started to wonder what I had hit. The flat tires seemed to appear out of nowhere and for some reason I felt suspicious. I got the damaged tire off and replaced it with a spare. I was just finishing up changing the tire when I heard the light sound of someone clearing their throat. It sounded like my wife, but when I turned around, I was greeted by a small woman with wild dreadlocks and a tattoo of a rose on the middle of her neck. I said hello in a tentative and confused voice. The woman smiled and she said in this sort of delicate voice, Hi, I'm Summer. You look like you could use some help. I just smiled and said, Oh, thanks, Summer, but I, 
I think we'll be okay. I was trying to be polite, but I was not feeling great about the situation. This woman kept looking to the side of the road like she seemed to be communicating with someone, but whenever I looked over there, I didn't see anything. She kept on insisting on helping, never changing this nice and polite voice that she had, and I just kept saying no thank you. Eventually, I started to pack up the tools and get myself ready to hit the road, and that's when this woman said, I think you really need my help. And then her voice changed sort of instantly. It wasn't this polite and delicate little voice anymore. It was angry, and almost a vicious voice as she said, Let me help you. I was not having any of this anymore. I turned to the woman, and in the meanest voice I could muster up, I said, Okay, lady, you need to leave. I got a family in the car and I'm not in the mood for all this crazy crap. If you don't leave, I'm calling the police right now or I'm taking care of this myself. I thought that my threat might do the trick, but instead, she just starts to laugh. I had enough and just turned around while she was laughing. I opened the driver's side door and put my keys in the cup holder, so all I had to do was push the start when I entered the truck. When I turned back around to grab the lug wrench, which is that cross-shaped wrench if you don't know what I'm talking about, I turned around to the woman and she was about in mid-swing with this lug wrench, haphazardly attempting to strike me, presumably in the head. She didn't seem very lucid and I was able to catch the blow with my hand, and I ended up just kicking her in the knees and shin, I guess, and she fell to the ground. She started grunting, and then began to run to the side of the road that she had kept looking at earlier. At this point, without wasting any time, I get in the truck, and I just sped off as fast as I could, constantly checking my mirror for any sign of this woman or any car following me, and thankfully the last 30 minutes of my drive went by with no crazy people or issues. I did tell my wife when she woke up, and she was angry that I didn't just call the police right away, and she honestly didn't believe me. She called as soon as we got to the campsite and gave the police this entire description that I had told her about the woman. The name she gave, the tattoo, and exactly the road where she confronted me. And I can't help but feel that the woman is going to find me and my family at this campsite. She clearly saw that I had camping gear in my truck when she confronted me. I didn't realize it until later, but now I can't help but think that she was somehow responsible for causing that flat tire. But clearly I have no evidence to back that theory up. I'm going to try and enjoy my trip but I wanted to get the story out while the details were clearly in my head. Now I can't stop wondering what it is she wanted. Did she want my truck with that spare tire? Did she want to rob me? Or was it something much worse? Wish me luck on my trip. If anything happens or any new developments come to light with police or something, I'll be sure to update everyone, but until then, I hope I never see that woman with that rose tattoo ever again. This story took place approximately 15 years ago. My parents let me have two of my closest friends over and they set up a tent for us to camp in the backyard. My mom bought a bunch of snacks and my dad ordered us a pizza and drinks before they left to go out for dinner. We were so excited to be out in the tent and we dragged as much food as we could to the backyard and started eating and just chatting. We went over to our schedule of scary stories, s'mores and whatever else we had planned for the night. We ate as much dinner as we could and then started sharing stories of our crushes and if we had enough courage to ask them to dance when school started the following year. I remember we were trying to set up a blanket and pillow as a fort inside the tent and we were unsuccessful. The whole time I felt like I heard something outside the tent though. I unzipped the screen, or the window as you call it, so I could look outside the side of the tent but I didn't see anything. And then about five minutes later, my friends said that they thought they heard something too. And it sounded like something brushed against the tent. Now my friend Audrey looked out the open screened window and said, I feel like I see something in black over there. Do you see it? As soon as I looked, I saw this sort of white Nike symbol jump out to me very quickly. 
I couldn't help it, but I screamed, followed by my friends screaming, and we ran into the house. We went into the bathroom and just locked ourselves in there. We tried to be as quiet as possible, but then we heard footsteps and the bathroom door began to jiggle. We all screamed at the top of our lungs and Audrey was now on the phone with the police. While she was on the phone, we were still screaming and then I heard my mom telling us to come out of the bathroom. We slowly opened the door and my parents were standing there. Still on the phone with the police, my dad grabbed the phone and said, I'm sorry, this is the father. I, I was just playing a joke on the girls during their sleepover. Being adults now, I'm surprised the cops didn't show up, but it is a small town and my dad knows everyone, so I'm sure he ended up talking to one of his friends and saying everything was alright. My friends and I were pretty angry at first, but my dad was a jokester and we got over it pretty quickly. He offered to get the fire started for us and help us with our s'mores. He played some light music and got the fire started for us in the backyard. He kept asking if there was anything else we needed at the store or inside, and I think he was feeling pretty guilty for actually scaring us so bad. We got tired pretty quickly and made our way to bed in the tents and just talked about anything and everything until we started dozing off and falling asleep one by one. I think I remember being the last one awake, wanting to make sure that my friends were comfortable and could fall asleep. I woke up suddenly, though, to pitch dark and the sound of crickets. I felt like I heard something, but maybe it was just a dream when I woke up. I heard one of my friends snoring and breathing pretty heavily. I hadn't noticed it before, but I assumed that they must have been completely zonked out. As I tried to doze back off, the breathing and snoring became louder, so I sat up to see if I could see which friend it was coming from. As I sat up, I was at eye level with the window screen and felt like I was having flashbacks from earlier and saw something move. Then all of a sudden, I heard the zipper from the tent door open. I yell, Dad, knock it off. Earlier was enough. I, I want my friends to actually want to come over again. He didn't say anything back, and my friends were starting to stir around now. Annoyed that my friends were now going to be woken up, I said, Dad, get out of here, please. I can still hear the response in my head, a voice that was not my father's, and much deeper said, How do you know it's me? My whole body felt like it froze, but the only thing I could think to do was grab my friend's hands and pull them. I basically dragged them, and we all ran inside. I don't remember anyone else screaming or yelling. I think my friends were more confused than anything else. I went right into my parents' room and told my dad what had happened. He seemed to jump right out of bed and went outside. I could hear him yelling something and then he came back in and got on the phone. He told my mom to stay inside with me and my friends and he waited outside. We eventually saw flashing lights. He was outside with the police for about 20 minutes, if I had to guess, and came back inside and talked to my mom first and then to me and my friends. He told us that there was a guy that seemed to be causing problems in the neighborhood that night and thankfully they did catch him and we were safe. He said he was so sorry for scaring us earlier and was happy everyone was okay. He asked my friends if they wanted to call their parents or go home. Aubrey was fine and she said that she wanted to stay but May called her mom and just went home. Aubrey and I decided to take our little camping night to the living room and my dad got us comfortable and made an impromptu pillow and blanket fort for us. There were only a few hours until morning and we got up early. My mom and dad made us breakfast and then asked if we wanted to have a pool day. And I remember that day being exactly what we needed to get our minds off the night before. I'm still friends with Audrey to this day and I honestly don't think either of us have been camping since then. Hey friends, thanks for listening. Click that notification bell to be alerted of all future narrations. I release new videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 7 p.m. Eastern Time, and there are super fun live streams every Sunday, Tuesday, and Thursday night. If you got a story, be sure to submit them to my subreddit, r slash let's read official, and you might even hear your story featured on the next video. And if you want to support me even more, Grab early access to all future narrations and bonus content over on Patreon, or click that big join button to hear about the extra perks offered for the channel. 
And check out the Let's Read podcast, where you can hear all of these stories in big compilations and save huge on data, located anywhere you listen to podcasts. Links in the description below. Thanks so much, friends. And remember, can you take me higher?